sermon at the Sardine Stone in my home church in Jackson under Bishop Combs. One sister, um, Mark Quinn Brewer's mother, Sister Brewer, had been seeking the Holy Ghost, got on her knees right in service. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. All I was doing, all I was doing was talking about Jesus. <laughs> you know, demonstration of the Spirit and of what? Power. That's what God wants today. Now, I'm not trying to puff myself up or anything. I'm just telling you what happened. That's all, because that's what happened. When you preach the Word of God, things will happen. And, of course, I preached and folk wanted to kill me. <laughs> So, praise the Lord. Reach out on the street corner, people throwing things at me, cussing at me, carrying on. Well, you know, whatever. Verse 5, let's read. <laughs> why, why did Paul say I'm preaching like this? Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in what? The power of God. You preach the word of God, the word of God is already anointed. That's why even if individuals that are not saved that preach if they preach the true word of God it will still have an effect even though that they may not have all the truth but because his word is anointed you see verse number um, six Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are what perfect that's the church the saints of God let's read yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. And the princes of this world has to do with the princes of education, those that are considered princes of education. Verse 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto what? That's what we speak of, the wisdom of God that is in a mystery. That means it is not revealed to the world. The world knows nothing about it. And they can't know anything about it unless they come in by way of the gospel and become a child of God and then the mystery of God can be revealed to them. But we speak it in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto what? Our glory. That means... It is a glory to us that we know about that hidden wisdom and the princes of this world, the most wise and educated individuals in this world don't even know about it. That's to what? Our glory. And when did God ordain that? Before the what? Before the world unto our glory. Verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew. Again, that's the princes of education. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the what? Now, of course, let's take it into this context. The princes before was Israel. If they knew who he really was, they would not have crucified him. And therefore, then, if they had not crucified him, that meant that they would have accepted him as a nation, and therefore, then, there would be no way for us to be saved. But today, the princes of this world has to do with the princes of education when it comes as far as the Gentiles is concerned. But in that day, it was Israel. None of them knew. It was even hidden from them. All right? Verse number 9. But as it is written... I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that what? And I hear people quote that scripture all the time, and they just leave it there. They say, you see, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But you can't stop there. Verse 10 goes along with it. Let's read. But God hath revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. The world don't know. We didn't know. But once we came into the church and were taught, then God revealed it to us. How? As we went to a seminary school. By his what? By his spirit. Can we say amen? The Holy Ghost in you opened your eyes as the Holy Ghost in the teacher was teaching. The Holy Ghost in the teacher was teaching, sending it out, and the Holy Ghost in you picked it up and opened your eyes and you got the picture. 
God has revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. Let's read. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, what? And I'm tired of these preachers talking about uh, throwing off on a lot of us. Talking about we all deep trying to get deep. Well, just because you can't get deep, don't be looking at me funny. <laughs> now, you know, you, you have all these guys, you know, they're very practical in their teachings and, and very shallow in their teachings, and they want to throw off on folk that like to get deep. Ain't nothing wrong with getting deep. You know why? Well, let's read the next part. For the Spirit searcheth what? All things, yea, the what? The Spirit searches what? All things, yea, the what? Deep things. So if the spirit is going deep, I want to go where the spirit is going. How about you? Now, just because you don't know some of the deep things, call some of us that do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you studied under the fathers, you would have some of the deep things because they went where the spirit went. And that's where I want to go. Wherever the Holy Ghost is going, that's where I want to be. Is that right? How about you? You know? Yeah, this is, you know, there's deep things in the Bible. I was studying the number four in the scriptures the other night and um, uh, running it all through the Bible. And, and God opened my eyes to something that I didn't know before. Now, in Revelation, Lord have mercy, I only got about three minutes. Well, I'll share this with you because I don't want you to walk out on me. Praise the Lord. I was studying the number four. You know, because in the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Is that right? The fourth day. Um, and so I was looking at the number four. And then you have the four creatures in Ezekiel 1. Then you have the four beasts in Revelations four and five, Revelation 4 and 5. And I was looking at that, and God opened my eyes to something. Because for years, I can never get the answer to this question. Why? are the four beasts in Revelations 4 and 5, why is the number four used? Now, we know the four beasts is symbolic of the glorified church. Is that right? Because it says in Revelation that the four beasts cried out uh, and said, uh, uh, worthy is the lamb because you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by thy blood. And the ones he has redeemed uh, spoken of there is the glorified church. So I was looking at why is he say four? Then the Lord opened my eyes. The reason why he uses four is because in that following verse, the four B says, you have redeemed us out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. How many is that? Four. That's why John uses the symbolism four. Because the glorified church will be made up of people out of those four categories. Out of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Now, I sent that out to some of my ministerial friends, some bishops or whatever, and said, did they find anything wrong with that? It was like, wow, that's deep. So I guess it's all right. <laughs> then I was looking at, uh, as we close. I'm giving you something to chew on. Um, God created the sun and the moon and the stars in what day? The fourth day, right? And I was looking in the scriptures about the characteristics of the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun typifies God. The moon typifies the church. And the stars typify the individual saints. Now, because now, I was, went all through the scriptures where everywhere it said sun, everywhere it said moon, everywhere it said stars. And um, looking at that number four. Now, the fourth day, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. A sign, season, days, and what? Years that there may be light upon the earth. So the fourth day, that's when the light came. And the fourth day is symbolic of the fourth feast. What is the fourth feast? Pentecost. When did the church begin? On the day of what? Pentecost. So I was looking at all those things, three, four o'clock in the morning. God's word is really something, isn't it? No philosophy, nothing made up, just everything out of the scriptures. 
because the scriptures fit perfectly when you put them in their proper places. Is that right? Rightly dividing the what? Word of truth. And all of that is just for the number four. Now, how do we know that um, the stars typifies the individual saints? Well, because God told Abraham, I'm going to multiply your seed like the stars of what? I never read that in Genesis 12. Stars of the sky. So God's people are as stars. Y'all looking at me strange. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse number 10, Moses tells Israel, God has multiplied you as the stars of heaven. So we get everything from the sun, is that right? There was no sun, we wouldn't live, right? God is the source of all life, isn't he? Then you have the moon that doesn't have light of itself, but the moon gets its light from the sun, right? Didn't Jesus say, let your light so shine? Where do we get our light from? Hello. Got it from the sun, right? Uh, we, got, we get our light from God because he is the light. Can we say amen? Then, of course, uh, the moon shines at night. The stars shine at night getting all that light from the sun, and we are his stars and his lights today shining in this dark world so that the world can see Jesus. And I'm going to close because I want you walking out on me. God bless you. All right. Are there <laughs> any, any questions tonight? Any questions before we close? Uh, there's a storm out. All right, storm coming. Yes, you want to sing? Okay. You you remember part of it? Yes, that's in um, Matthew chapter five, I believe it is, chapter six, all around there. Yes, we let our light shine by living holy. And again, we get our light from the light giver, and that's Jesus, right? Bible, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then another, in St. John 8 and 12, he said, I am the light of the world. But he's not here anymore. So you know who the lights of the world are today? That's us. We are the stars of God shining in this dark world so that people can see the way of salvation. All right, let's prepare to take our offering tonight. And um, we ask Brother Julian, if you assist Deacon, you need some assistance.